August of 1945 is when they dropped the bomb, and then the word was out about Oak Creek. The Secret City. It's a place with a storied past many have heard about, but few experienced firsthand. And I thought it was exciting, going someplace I didn't know where I was going. As the Manhattan Project moved to Oak Ridge, thousands of Tennesseans moved out. Well, they wanted to do anything they could to stop that killing and end the war. Their stories and how that mysterious research changed the world and shaped East Tennessee. The story of Oak Ridge is really a story of American science. And what Oak Ridge is doing now to move into the future. There is probably not a single person anywhere on this God-driven earth that is not impacted by Oak Ridge National Laboratory. This is Oak Ridge National Lab. It's 75 years old and still a mystery to so many people in East Tennessee. Tonight, we take you inside the lab and back in time to 75 years ago. It's a story of how America did something that no one else in the world could do by bringing together the scientific community, uh, academia, industry, the military and government to harness the atom. The year was 1942. We shall send you in ever increasing numbers. And the world was at war. Guns. That is our purpose and our pledge. President Roosevelt had received a letter from Albert Einstein warning him of Germany's research into atomic warfare. So the U.S. government was looking for a location to house a top secret mission, the Manhattan Project. Last thing anyone wanted was for Germany to figure out how to harness the atom first. With some help from Tennessee Senator Kenneth McKellar, the secret city landed here in East Tennessee. Oak Ridge wasn't even on a map. People didn't even know where Oak Ridge was. They just said, go to Knoxville and ask. So they said, we're moving. And I asked them where, and they said, well, I can't tell you where we're going. But I said, I'm going with you. Thousands of workers poured into East Tennessee, eager to help with the war effort. That was the mentality back then. We want to help win the war. So everyone was looking for what they can do. The Manhattan Project brought thousands of people to Oak Ridge in just a few years, but that rapid growth had its downside. This was a rural town. There was nothing here when I came, you know. And uh, so I wouldn't step in that mud, so the cab driver carried me inside. The mud was from the rapid construction of homes, commercial buildings, and offices, all to support the war effort. Hired to document the town's dramatic transformation, Ed Westcott. And they wanted someone here to take photographs of what they knew was going to be a very historic uh, operation. And he had plenty of changes to document. In 1942, about 3,000 people lived in this area that would become Oak Ridge. They lived spread across about half a dozen communities. But the government came in and told them to get out, and they left everything behind. The new Bethel Baptist Church is one of the few buildings still standing. Many of them didn't have automobiles. They didn't have trucks to move their belongings. What they did have is young men in the military getting killed. So they got off of their property. Many of them, in a matter of days, make room for the Manhattan Project. For some people, it wasn't the first move. Some had already been relocated first for the creation of the Great Smoky Mountains National Park in 1934. Then, for the construction of Norris Dam in 1936. Don't you know they thought the government just comes along every 10 years and makes us move? Once construction began, it was a race to figure out the best way to harness the atom. All this science was new. It was happening in real time. The scientists were debating among themselves whether this would even work. In Oak Ridge, scientists worked nonstop at three sites, K-25, Y-12 and X-10. This was the center of activity in the 1940s, the X-10 graphite reactor. It was built in just nine months. It went critical at five o'clock in the morning on November 4th, 1943. X-10, which would later become Oak Ridge National Lab, was the smallest of the three facilities. Its experimental graphite reactor was the first permanent nuclear reactor in the world. 
When the K-25 gaseous diffusion plant was built, the monstrous U-shaped building was one of the largest buildings in the world. The uranium enriched at K-25 then went to the third facility, Y-12. There, more than 20,000 workers took uranium from K-25 and other facilities and used calutrons to separate and capture uranium isotopes, which fueled the first atomic bomb. The amount at full production that Y-12 was producing uh, was about a half pound a day. While producing about a half pound a day, uh, Y-12 was consuming about 15 percent of the nation's electrical grid. Y-12 was also home to the women who became symbols of the Oak Ridge war effort, the Calutron girls. Most of them had no clue how their work would change the world. You're going to do this job and you know, you know nothing and you, know, you don't know the product and you don't know what's inside your cubicle. It was trial and error. That trial and error helped create something that the world had never seen before. At 9.15, the bomb is dropping. August 6th, 1945, little boy dropped on Hiroshima, ending the Second World War. And suddenly, the secret city was secret no more. Then you knew, you knew uh, what a magnitude of material you were, mm -hmm. were, were working with. And uh, I think you would have been frightened if you had any clue. More than 140,000 people died, and Japan was devastated. But here in East Tennessee, people were rejoicing. I remember vividly. It, it was just an exciting time. There was also a very sobering realization about the, the fact that this bomb was this terrible new weapon. And it, it shouldn't, it, it can't be ignored that people realized the gravity of what they had done and the ramifications uh, would, would be felt for the next 75 years. We still today, um, as a country, are trying to make sure that we handle this knowledge responsibly. So the lab's history is deeply connected to that time when the nation called upon this laboratory to step up and, and be part of the solution to, to the World War, and at a time when people didn't know whether there was going to be a tomorrow. Cutting edge technology with no more wars to win. The question after the war was what would we do with this amazing machine, the graphite reactor. How Oak Ridge moved into the future following the war, and how it continues to evolve today.